afternoon, I'm Dakota Makris. The U.S. Supreme Court overturned the landmark abortion rights case Roe v. Wade earlier today. Justices ruled in favor of a Mississippi law and in doing so decided abortion should not be protected under the Constitution. Washington News Bureau reporter Peter Zampa is outside the court to break down the historic decision. A frenzy outside the nation's highest court Friday after a conservative leaning bench released its opinion in Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization. The majority opinion says abortion rights are no longer protected under the Constitution. Decades of constitutional protection Hands off. gone. Justice Samuel Alito's opinion says nowhere in the Constitution is the right to abortion mentioned. So he and his conservative colleagues overturned the decision in Roe versus Wade, which granted those constitutional protections in 1973. Mississippi Attorney General Lynn Fitch argued for her state's law in front of the court in December and said in a video statement, Roe v. Wade is now behind us consigned to the list of infamous cases that collapsed under the weight of their errors. Fitch believes it's a victory for women, children, and the court itself. The decision came after a draft of the opinion leaked from the court in early May. Supporters of abortion rights prepared for this day. But Julie Rickleman, who argued on behalf of Jackson Women's Health, says the fight will go on to protect these rights. In the days ahead, the center will work with our clients, our partners and allies, as we have done for many years to preserve access where we can. The decision on the legality of abortion now lies with states. 13 states had so-called trigger laws ready to go into effect if justices overturned Roe v. Wade. In some cases, outlawing it completely, even in cases of rape and incest. Legal expert Paul Schiff Berman argues these laws could create divisions among states. There will be increasing tensions as uh, women try to go from one state to another. In his support of the majority opinion, Justice Clarence Thomas alluded to the idea of reviewing other rights in the future, like contraceptive rights and LGBTQ rights. Reporting in Washington, I'm Peter Zampa. Well, what does this landmark ruling mean for Kentucky? Well, Kentucky is one of 13 states to pass a trigger law. This means as of this moment, abortion is now banned here in the Commonwealth. The trigger law was signed by Governor Matt Bevin in 2019. The decision to undo nearly 50 years of the precedent will have sweeping ramifications for tens of millions of women across the country as abortion rights are curtailed, particularly in GOP-led states in the South and Midwest, and lead to a patchwork of laws absent to the constitutional protection. So far, there are only a handful of what are called sanctuary states, as you can see on your screen. Those states include California, Oregon, Washington, New York, Colorado, Kansas, and Illinois. Well, these states are considered to be states that help women seeking reproductive care. J.P. Morgan Chase says it will pay for its employees to travel to another state to get an abortion if that is their only option. Uh, it comes in the wake of the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, which had guaranteed a constitutional right to an abortion since 1973. The financial giant's travel benefit for abortion goes into effect July 1st. More than half of the states were expected to ban abortion. The benefit expansion was first announced on June 1st. J.P. Morgan Chase confirmed the change Friday, saying while abortion has long been a covered service for the bank, it will now be included under its health care travel benefit. The Supreme Court decision has been expected since Politico published a leaked draft majority opinion in early May. A warm one weather-wise around the mountains this afternoon, and that will continue right on into even this evening and into tomorrow and Sunday as well. Outside now from our front door here at WYMT, a few high clouds working in, plus some of those fair weather cumulus clouds this afternoon. Plenty of blue sky and sunshine out there. Buffalo Mountain here in Perry County sitting at 91 degrees. It is a warm and toasty one around the mountains today. Many of us in the upper 80s and low 90s. The good news is that for most, the dew points are not too high, in which case we're not seeing those heat indices off the charts, though we will continue to see an increase in moisture over the next couple of days. Pinpoint Doppler around the region right now 
It's all quiet, a clean sweep around the mountains, though you don't have to go far down towards the mountains of East Tennessee and Western North Carolina before you run into a few more showers and thunderstorms. That looks like it will be working in our direction, not tonight, but into the day tomorrow. We've got the possibility for a few of those. So download that WYMT weather app and keep it handy over the next couple of days because we do have the possibility for some of those showers and storms. Again, not tonight. But as we head into tomorrow afternoon, now I'll have the details on what this means for your weekend forecast and what we can expect in terms of showers and storms coming up in just a few minutes. Dakota. All right, Evan, thank you. McGoffin County Schools are mourning the loss of a beloved bus driver. 60 year old Brenda Prater of Salyersville died on June 19th after a long battle with cancer, leaving behind a host of family and friends. Officials with McGoffin County Schools say her dedication to students will never be forgotten. Working as a bus driver for the district for more than 30 years, Superintendent Chris Meadows said Prater's legacy will live on and her positive attitude has impacted the lives of countless students and staff. Brenda was always positive and upbeat no matter with what she was dealing with. Uh, prior to being superintendent, I was a high school principal here in the district, and I have met with her on different occasions regarding uh, issues that may have happened on the bus, but nothing uh, seemed to get Brenda down. Meadows also said Prater will be dearly missed by the entire district and community, especially the students who rode her bus daily. We'll have more on this story tonight at 6 o'clock. Doctors are encouraging parents to get their children vaccinated now that the Pfizer vaccine for children under 5 is available. Chelsea Jones explains. Well, doctors are encouraging parents to get their children vaccinated now that the Pfizer vaccine for children younger than five is available. Dr. Horace Hambrick says it's safe and effective. While reports have shown that many kids won't suffer terrible consequences from COVID, Hambrick explained that more than a thousand children nationwide have died from the virus. He noted children hospitalizations are up and more kids are showing long haul COVID symptoms. We're concerned about hospitalizations. We're concerned about the sequelae of COVID uh, infection, which is in children, the multi-system inflammatory uh, condition in children. He says his doctor's office has administered about 3,500 COVID vaccines, which to him is not a lot. But when you consider the fact that some children have had, everybody's supposed to have two, and many have had their booster dose now, uh, we know there are a lot of children that are out there that are unvaccinated. But with the Pfizer vaccine for kids six months to five years old now available, Georgetown Pediatrics has made some changes in case there's a high demand. Hambrick says the office has a nurse on hand strictly administering COVID vaccines. Now, the doctor says the Pfizer vaccine for children younger than five is a three dose series. He says it's too early to tell if a booster will be needed. That was Chelsea Jones reporting UK Healthcare will also be officially be vaccinating children five and younger next week. Starting Monday, they'll give out both Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. More Kentucky counties are now in the COVID red zone. Here's the new map. You can see more Western Kentucky counties and our whole Eastern Kentucky counties are red. Well, Mayan County, excuse me, counties in Northern Kentucky that were red are now yellow. Well, new data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention seems to answer the question, how much does a second booster protect against COVID? The CDC says data shows people 50 years old and older have received two, year, two boosters, are more than 40 times less likely to die from COVID-19 than those who are unvaccinated, and they'll also four times less likely to die than people who've only had one booster, though the death rate is low for both groups. In the last week of April, there were only 0 0.03 deaths per every 100,000 people with two boosters. Somerset is applying for $1 million in sports tourism funds to upgrade the youth sports facilities in the community. Well, the bill passed in a recent legislative session includes $1 million for Somerset's parks and recreation development. Somerset Mayor Alan Keck thanks Senator Rick Girdler for getting it into this budget, stating that the new facilities would be beneficial for the community and tourism. We've heard from dozens of parents that want more opportunities for their kids. You know, sports is, is, a, is a huge thing in our community. It's a huge thing uh, across Kentucky. I, I played, and uh, it's, it's a thing that, you know, brings people together. Well, the hope is have the new facilities complete by fall of 2023 or early 2024. 
The Senate Intelligence Committee has advanced legislation that would allow U.S. intelligence agencies to hire people who have used marijuana. The provision would bar intelligence agencies from discriminating against applicants based solely on past use of marijuana. The bill was unanimously approved on Wednesday but still needs a full Senate vote. National security officials have long said the lifetime pro prohibition on marijuana use has limited the pool of qualified candidates for key roles. This has become even more true as attracting and retaining tech and cybersecurity talent has increasingly become a priority. A memorial service for the victims of the Surfside condo collapse is being held today in Florida to mark one year since the tragedy. A private family vigil to mark the time that the collapse happened overnight. 98 people died when the oceanfront building suddenly came down in the middle of the night. Nicole Lorne has the latest from Surfside. Families together with first responders, officials and community members gathered at the site of the condo collapse to mark one year since the Surfside condominium tragedy. As a small town of eight blocks, we all had ties to somebody in that building. First Lady Jill Biden offered comfort to those who lost their loved ones. We are praying for you and we are grieving with you. 92-year-old Hilda Noriega was one of the victims who died when Champlain Tower South collapsed in the middle of the night. There's just this big void of love that was just constantly poured into my heart, into my family's heart. Banners bearing the victims' names and ages border the site where the building once stood here on Collins Avenue. Family members are missing loved ones and answers. I'm very disappointed that we still don't know why the building fell down. Former Surfside Mayor Charles Burke had captured these images when he arrived on scene. He's frustrated with the investigation in the hands of the National Institute of Standards and Technology and not expected to conclude until 2024. We've got residents of condos all throughout Surfside and all throughout Miami that are wondering if their building's going to fall down too. Families mark this somber day holding fast to memories as they still await answers. Nicole Lauren, CBS News, Surfside, Florida. A judge also approved a $1 billion settlement that will come from several sources, including insurance companies, engineering companies, and a luxury condo recently built next door. But none of the parties are admitting wrongdoing. Coming up here on First at Four, no more mowing. No more wow. I'll tell you why more people are giving of grass for an artificial yard. And our summertime forecast continues with hot and potentially stormy weather. Those details are coming up next.